Good day, Luisians. I'm sorry that I'm pre-recording this lecture and I'm not able to be present with you today because of uh, earlier commitments as a transitioning educator to a clinician. Nevertheless, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dean Wilfred Kabaw Kabawatan for the opportunity to still present this lecture to you, uh, even uh, if uh, it is pre-recorded. Interestingly, I'm pre-recording it today uh, uh, on the day of the lectures, precisely because uh, this is the only window time I have. And I hope you'd bear with me that there is no uh, video nor face to this pre-recording, also precisely because it's uh, 5 a.m. Uh, and uh, and I've not uh, actually prepared for anything else except for the presentation. So uh, I'm pre-recording this one as part also of the ongoing formation of uh, the faculty and the students uh, of St. Louis College of San Fernando um, with the theme Misho et Sapientia uh, or Sapienta Research Symposium on Serving, Leading, and Continuing the Mission. Uh, this uh, 16th day of March 2024 and I was asked to talk about phenomenology and phenomenological research. I'd like to talk about this topic in two parts. First, I'd like to talk about a phenomenological approach. And secondly, to talk about phenomenological research. I did finish a PhD in philosophy, uh, but a distinction needs to be made between the type of research that we do, phenomenology, and the research process, phenomenological, while they are often intertwined and reduced to each other, um, in reality, they're not always reduced to each other. So let's talk about phenomenology first. I'd like to take my discussions on phenomenology from a philosopher that is not often discussed or even more often reduced to merely the body uh, or embodiment, um, Mar Maurice Merleau-Ponty. Let's look at some of the words from his text, The Visible and The Invisible. He says, convinced that there's no privilege point Hence, nature, history, and being itself are unveiled, or as he says so often, that high-altitude thinking detaches us from the truth of our situation. It was necessary at the same time that he forgo the illusion of seeing his own work as a spectacle. These editors forward to Mar Maurice Merleau-Ponty's Visible and Invisible is something we can consider. There is no privilege point. It's very important to see that sometimes as we climb through the academic ladder, we can also presume and think that we are in fact in charge of everything. But the truth is maybe we're not. Maybe the way we understand the world is not always the best way to understand the world. And because of that, we need to understand that maybe there is, in fact, no privilege point. My researches focused on the performance of the devotion to the Black Nazarene. And in that research, I re still remember the first time I went to Quiapo and found everything just out of place, disordered. But then on the way back to the Ateneo then, I asked myself, how can it be possible that I saw disorder 
But all these devotions, devotees, totaling about 15 million or maybe even more, can see order in it. Is it because I come from a position of privilege? Or is it because I'm not seeing anything? Then it dawned on me. How many, in fact, in all those 15 million and more devotees do, in fact, study philosophy and theology? Maybe 3%? They're ne they need to experience something sacred from their point of view that I need to see. In this case, uh, the editor speaks of it as an unveiling, no? as an aletheia. No? Lanthanos is to cover. Aletheia is to uncover. Very much true to the Greek experience, to the early Greek experience of the truth. Thus, phenomenology operates in that idea of the phi, which literally means light. Aristotle himself will say, zo ta phenomena, which literally means to save those that shows. Father Roque Ferriols, SJ, would say, iligtas ang mga nag -aanyo. And therefore, uh, this high bro, high altitude thinking can, in fact, disengage us from the truth, draw us far from the truth. And maybe that's what graduate education did for many, right? This disregarded us from the truth. Thus, Cloud Lefort would continue and explain it was necessary that he oblige himself to make his way in semi-obscurity in order to discover the interior connection of his questions and fully comply with what demands to be said here and now without ever giving himself over to the security of a meaning already traced out, already thought. Of course, if you studied quantitative research methodology, you'd realize that's basically what the theoretical framework is there for. Or a, a theoretical framework uh, is only something that you validate. It's only something that you check if it is in agreement. With your idea. That's the reason why you can see dissertations that are mere applications of a theoretical framework, right? Uh, I remember there was a time um, when I was still doing my uh, first PhD in St. Louis University. Uh, there was a time you see dissertations that almost looked alike. The only distinction is the place or the locale of the study. So you can find, for example, studies that look like leadership styles in Bauco Mountain Province, leadership styles in Benguet, leadership style, let me that Benguet, leadership styles in, for example, San Fernando City. All about leadership styles. The only difference is place of implementation. Why is that weird? Well, because as you might have heard also, uh, with the implementation of validity and reliability in instruments, it's supposed to be, the results are supposed to be generalizable. Or better yet, following the rules of positive science, 
applicable to all peoples and places at all times. But is it really the case? Does Mar Merleau-Ponty in the structure of behavior would say, we will come to these questions not starting from preconceived frameworks, but from below. We will come to these questions by starting not from above, not from a position of superiority, but from a position of service. Right? Uh, sometimes you read uh, this bishop, I forgot his name, that basically explains to us that before you go to a mission place, you should not forget to remove your shoes because you might step on people's dreams, on people's hopes, on people's aspirations, and you might think that you are in fact the one that's bringing God to them when in fact God was already there even before you step in. Does you see uh, perception? Perception. That's very important to phenomena, phenomenology, looking. This interrogative thought which lets the perceived world be, lets the perceived world be rather than posits it, that rather than dictate it, before which the things form and undo themselves in a sort of gliding beneath the yes and the no. Here, Maurice Merleau-Ponty basically simply says, it's gonna, you need to allow the text, you need to allow the experience to come to four. You need to allow things to come to four. That's what he's saying. To let things be. And by doing so, to clarify directions, movements. He'd further say, it is, it is a question put to what does not speak. It is right. something shows. It's not you who opens it up. It reveals itself. It manifests. It directs this question to our mute life, to our ordinariness, and it manifests itself as something that needs to be considered. It directs this question to our mute life, which basically means we can be living routinary lives and yet also at the same time it disrupts us, it disturbs us, it awakens us. In the Filipino language, we'd say, tinatawag yung attention. Tinatawag ang attention para sa mas malalim na pagtingin. Simon Weil in that book, Waiting for God, basically speaks of learning, education for that matter, as attentiveness, as learning attention, as being attentive to the questions that awakens us from the ordinariness of our lives. Thus, it addresses itself to the compound of the world and of ourselves that precedes reflection. Right? So, we are asked, tinatawag yung pansin, tinatanong tayo, 
sa pagkaordinaryo ng mga buhay natin para harapin yung isang komplikadong mundo na tila nauuna sa atin. Na tila hindi nakadepende sa pag-unawa, pagtingin natin. Does Merleau-Ponty will explain in the preface of phenomenology and of perception, phenomenological method, therefore, is a matter of describing and not a matter of explaining or analyzing. There. That line almost explains everything. Description. Not explanation. Not analyzing. Sometimes I find it weird that in all the dissertation and thesis I sat in, they all begin with demographic profile. Demographic profile? What the hell? Say sorry. To ask the question, what is the demographic profile? Is not to ask a research question. The demographic profile of respondents, even in quantitative research, is a methodological question, not a research question. Nagbabangad tayo. When I was working on my PhD dissertation in 2003, yes, about 21 years ago, I already know you never ask the question, what is the demographic profile? One, that question only works in causal comparative frameworks. When you're doing T-test, and when you're using T-test, ANOVA, Cruz-Calwalis, Man-Whitney U-test. And two, you do not gather data that are unnecessary. Right? And therefore, the first question in a quantitative research will always be descriptive before it becomes inferential. We know that statistically. We need descriptive data in order to do inferences. So I do not actually understand questions also that begins with inferences. Is there a significant difference in the A in terms of that, that, that? Or what is the relationship? Even before you test difference or test relationships, for Christ's sake, describe first. And that's where phenomenology brings us to. Describing, not explaining, not analyzing. Describing. Thus we explain We live in intersubjectivity. We live in a world that is constantly engaging with each other. They're intersubjectivity. A world with several composable entrances. We are one for the others. Me, others, hinge. Which is common life. Like me, my body hinge. Which for me is not just weight, a curse, but also my flywheel, he says. Accompany others, history, and not just endo with it, with sense by decision. Whether I like it or not, my understanding of research, I didn't arrive on my own. It was taught to me. By all the other good 
and not so good teachers doing research. It was taught to me by my life experiences, my errors, mistakes of having done research. Even my faith, kahit yung pananampalataya natin, hindi naman ito dumarating sa atin na malinis na malinis na. Sa ayaw natin sa hindi, kadalasan yung pananampalataya natin, resulta at produkto yan ng pasa-pasang pananampalataya ng maraming, maraming, maraming tao. Yes, our thoughts, our ideas are not value neutral. They've been handed down, conditioned, preset, preconceived through the years. Through the years. And therefore, I need to recognize how my understanding is precisely like that. Condition. Precondition. The philosopher knows very well that whatever be his effort in the best of cases, it will take its place among the artifacts and products of culture as an instance of them. Yes, instance of them. Isang bahagi lang. A splinter compared to a log, for example. A splinter. If this paradox is not an impossibility and if philosophy can speak, it is because language is not the only depository of fixed and acquired significations. There are more because its cumulative power itself results from a power of anticipation of prepossession. Diba? Isang paghahangad sa isang posibilidad ng pag-angkin. Isang paghahangad sa posibilidad ng pag-intindi. Diba? Paminsan, babasa ka na isang teksto, wala ka na ba talaga naiintindihan? Pero umaasa ka na kahit wala kang naiintindihan, makakarating ka sa pag-intindi. Because one speaks not only of what one knows, but also of one does not know in order to know it. Alam ko, parang gulat na gulat na kayo. Anong pinag-uusapan nito? Di ba? Last quote before I move to phenomenological research. And because language informing itself expresses at least laterally an ontogenesis of which it is part. Diba? Isang pagbubuo ng meron. Ontogenesis. The words most charged with philosophy are not necessarily those that contain what they say. Hindi laging nakakahon yung pagdana sa salita. Sometimes, words are not enough to say what we experience. Di ba? Yun nga yung mga pa-emo na meme, di ba? Parang tatahimik na lang ako kasi mas masakit pa kaysa sa salita yung gusto kong sabihin. But rather, those that most energetically open upon being because they more closely convey the life of the whole and make our habitual evidences vibrate until they disjoin. Paminsan, sa karanasan natin, mas malaki pa yung posibilidad na may makita ka pa 
kaysa sa nakita na na yung tawag ng phenomena ay isang imbitasyon na makita pa na makita sa harap ng maraming tinitignan yaong tumatawag ng ating pansin yaong nag-iimbita sa ating mas lumalim pa mas intindihin pa mas pasukin pa yung mundo ng pag-unawa pagtingin yung misteryo ng pagdanas at doon mahalaga lahat ng bagay, di ba? Doon mahalaga yung nakikita at tinitignan. Magpapakita ko ng konte para naman hindi ako magmukhang voice over lang. Uh, so, what we have looked at uh, the past Uh, minutes is actually a reflection of what phenomenology is from a philosophical perspective. And yes, you understand it from a philosophical perspective. Now we view it from a research perspective. And from a research perspective, you do not forget what I've been talking about since a while ago. Because we will go back to that. And let's go back to that already. So, phenomenology in general, uh, there are two dictionary definitions to it. Um, again, no, there are many phenomenological schools. There's no one phenomenological school. Uh, I've shown you the tradition of Merleau-Ponty, but uh, so many... Uh, Thinkers have evolved from that, and Merleau-Ponty's understanding has evolved so much far from uh, the understanding of uh, phenomenological phenomenology's founder Edmund Husserl. Uh, nevertheless, we go back to a definition uh, in an attempt to be able to capture at least what phenomenology is about, since I've been talking about it for a very long time. They're both nouns, as you can see from these two dictionaries. The other one would say the philosophical study of phenomena as distinguished from ontology being. Uh, as such, it's a study of perceptual experience in its purely subjective aspect. No? Pag, uh, pag unawa sa isang karanasan, batay sa karanasan ng isang tao, subjective, no? in contrast to objective no again these two are subjective and objective are not totally different from each other uh and if you've studied for example uh rene descartes no cogito sum uh you'd realize yes there's no ergo in that statement from the Meditations on First Philosophy, but only cogito sum. I think I am. Uh, you'd realize it is Descartes that actually separated the subject cogito uh, from the object. Um, in the American Heritage Dictionary, it says it's a philosophy or a method of inquiry based on the premise that reality consists of objects and events as they are perceived or understood in human consciousness and not of anything independent of human consciousness. Lahat ng pag-unawa ng mundo, nakakagat sa karanasan, sa pagtingin ng tao. Di ba? Uh, remember, if you, many of you are educators, maybe you, you've heard about George Berkeley of the empirical traditions, uh, empiricists. Di ba? Hume, Locke, And Berkeley, Berkeley there no, will actually says esse est percipe, which basically means to see, to be, to be, no, to exist, is to be perceived. Uh, perception. So 
phenomenologists, therefore, sorry, so phenomenological research is a strategy of, or of inquiry, and this comes from Mustakas, uh, And if you notice, I, I change from uh, from a very, very artistic set of slides to a very, very uh, technical slides, precisely because we're already entering the research world. Uh, phenomenological research doesn't mean hit anywhere, no structure and the like. <laughs> <laughs> no, please. You can do that in phenomenology as a discipline maybe but not in phenomenological research because in phenomenological research we're already entering the research side which would necessitate a conceptual framework at least if not a theoretical framework going back to mustakas um, here you'd see understanding the lived experiences Marks phenomenology is a philosophy as well as a method. And the procedure involves studying a small number of subjects through extensive and prolonged engagement to develop patterns and relationships of meaning. Diba? Uh, pag tingin ko dito, alam mo yun, uh, may dalawang uri ng pagbabakasyon. There are two ways of vacationing. Sometimes you can join a tour group. You can go to Italy, for example, to the Rome, and you will ride the bus, hop from one place to another, and then come home to the Philippines. Diba? Nakita mo yung Roma, nakapunta ka sa mahalagang lugar, pero parang hindi mo pa rin nakita yung Roma at kulang pa rin. At Sa totoo pa nga, pagod na pagod ka kasi sa dami ng nakita mo, parang wala kang nakita. Katatapos mo lang magbakasyon, gusto mong magbakasyon muli. <laughs> Ganon, nakaranasan. Sa isang banda naman, uh, pwede ka rin naman magbakasyon sa Roma, pupunta ka lang doon. Doon ka lang sa isang hotel titira. Doon ka lang kakain sa isang grupo ng kainan. Makikilala mo yung mga tagapagsilbi. Makikilala mo yung pagkain. Chill lang. Makikilala mo kung paano sila mabuhay. Sa tingin ko, yan din yung tinatawag ni Padre Roque Ferriols na tinukoy ko kanina na tanaw at sisid. Di ba? Pwede akong parang sumakay ako ng helicopter, makikita ko isang lugar. Makikita ko ang Metro Manila sa taas. Makita ko yung mga building, makikita ko yung traffic. Na parang naintindihan ko yung Maynila, pero hindi ko talaga naintindihan. Ibang-iba yung karanasan kung talagang nasa loob ako ng Maynila. Makikipagsapalaran. Makikipagbungguhan sa mga tao. Dalawang karanasan. To a certain extent, this definition of mustakas will reduce phenomenology to something like ethnographic research. But it is not ethnographic research. Phenomenologists are researchers who search for essentials, for invariant structure of the central underlying meaning of the experience and emphasize the intentionality of consciousness where experiences contain both the outward appearance and inward consciousness based on memory, image, and meaning. Kaya nga, ang goal pa rin is to be able to capture the underlying essence. When I studied the Black Nazarene, it 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 was a question to me why 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 it's a unique procession, and it dawned on me that the only way to understand it is to understand 
the sensibility of the looban. The looban sensibility. And it doesn't mean the looban sensibility, for example, in places where they don't have dining halls, living rooms. Diba? Maka tumira ka ba naman sa sa 4x4 four four lang na kwarto, diba? 4 feet by 4 feet lang na kwarto. Anong malalagay mo doon? Kusina mo. Yung kusina mo, doon na rin kainan mo, doon na rin ang, doon ka na rin manunod. Eh kung mainit pa, diba? Kawawa ka. Kaya gagawin mo, lalabas ka. Kaya yung kalye, para sa kanila, malaga malaga Kasi doon sila nakikipagtagpo sa iba. Doon sila nakikipagtagpo, doon sila kumukuha ng balita, doon sila lahat. Yun ang kanilang social media, kalye. Di ba? Dahil yun yung social media nila, yun yung place of the encounter, gaya ng sinasabi ko. Doon nila nakakatagpo. Doon nila nakikita. Yung mga bagay-bagay. Kaya sa karanasan ng kya po, mahalaga yung mahalaga yun. Kasi doon nakakatagpo nila ang Diyos sa kalye. Di ba? Memory, image, and meaning. Di ba? Kaya nga lagi sinasabi ko sa lahat ng mga na-publish kong paper sa Kiapo, laging may sensorium yan. Laging merong karanasan yan. Di ba? Kaya laging babalik yung phenomenology sa pagpapakita ng basic structure ng karanasan. Ano ba yung mahalagang struktura ng karanasan? At hindi ito nagmumula lamang sa wala. Ha? Kaya Kaya kailangan pa rin kayong gagawa ng related literature. Kung ano man yung nakita mo, dapat pwedeng makita rin gamit ang iba. Sa pamagitan ng iba. Hindi pwedeng hindi. Uh, kakaiba yan. Kailangan natin makita yan. Uh, dapat, dapat pwede mo pa rin pag-usapan. Kaya gagamit ka pa rin ng Review of Related Literature. Kasi tatandaan mo, kung ikaw na lang yung nakakakita ng isang bagay at ikaw lang nagsasabi nito, baka, baka naglolokohan lang tayo. <laughs> uh, walang basic structure dun. Dapat yung basic structure, kaya rin i-recognize ng iba na basic structure. Hindi pwedeng ikaw lang. ba? Uh, kaya nga lagi yang merong apat na batayan, di ba? Philosophy without presupposition. No? Philosophy yang yung without presupposition, syempre suspension of biases. Uh, diyan mo rin makikita yung philosophy as a search for wisdom. hindi filosofiya sabi nga ni Plato kahit anong mangyari hindi hindi mapapasayo yung iniibig mo kasi kung sa iyo na yon hindi mo na siya iniibig hindi sa akin galing yan na kay Plato yan galing Kaya nga sabi niya yung wisdom daw a philosopher will never be wise because he cannot pursue something he already possess A philosopher is neither ignorant says Plato because he knows what he does not have Lagi daw na sa gitna Kaya makikita mo yung halaga ng consciousness. Y o yung 
yung consciousness as always intentionality the desire to know the desire to grasp the desire for everything and here you see the refusal to simply subject everything to the dichotomy laid down by Descartes kasalanan ni Descartes yan subject object dichotomy pero simula kay Descartes kahit anong mangyari hindi hindi na maaaring ibalik muli Kaya nga Cartesian meditations, napakahalaga yung Cartesian meditations na yan para kay Husserl. The strong philosophical components makes phenomenology particularly useful in social and health sciences. In sociology, Psychology, nursing, and even education. Ganyan kahalaga yan. So, what are the features of phenomenological research? First, says Creswell, what is the phenomenon to be explored? No, And here, kailangan i-clarify yung single concept or even idea. No, I've made seven Scopus publications on the Black Nazarene, on the devotion to the Black Nazarene. I've tackled different areas of the Black Nazarene. I've always had the idea that the good researcher is the researcher who has the ability to stay with in one topic and to exhaust this one topic. Diba? Uh, so define the single concept. Conceptus from the Latin word conceptus. Diba? Immaculate conception there. Conceptus. To conceive, to create, to construct, if you will. Second, explore the phenomenon with a heterogeneous group who have experienced the phenomenon. Kailangan alamin yung phenomena sa pamamagitan pakikipag-usap sa mga taong nakaranas ng phenomena. Di ba? Yan yung lagi ko sinasabi. Nagpunta ko sa kaya po, tinanong, ano bang hinihingi nyo? Bakit kayo punta ng punta dito? Sabi sa akin ng isang deboto, wala kaming hinihingi. Nagpapasalamat kami. Di ba? Konsepto natin, lagi dapat may hinihingi itong mga to. Pero tama, pwede rin bang nakatanggap na sila? Ang galing, di ba? Uh, so, and then you engage in a philosophical discussion. You have to discuss how the individuals have both subjective and objective experiences. The researcher may bracket self. Tawag namin yan sa phenomenology, epoche. Epoche. Horse, using a horse blinder. Removing your horse blinder, sorry. Suspending your judgment. To discuss the personal experience or phenomenon. Although, tandaan nyo, in qualitative research, the researcher is a data gathering instrument that's the reason why in quantitative research you can never speak of an eye but in qualitative research you can always speak of an eye but what will make your study different from all the rest it's not the eye it's the triangulation tandaan nyo Kung validity and reliability ang issue ng quantitative research sa qualitative research, ang tanong lagi triangulation. Meron bang tatlong pinagmulan ng sources? At yung tatlong pinagmulan ng sources na to, sabay-sabay ba nilang nag-a-agree doon sa sinasabi mo? 
sometimes it's it's a joke how we understand qualitative research. I've seen a study that has three questions, and then problem number one, they answer it with a with an interview with a KII key informant interview. Problem number two, they answer it with focus group discussion. Problem number three, they focus it with document. They answer it with a uh, document analysis. Uh, that's not triangulation. For God's sake, uh, dapat yan. Uh, problem number one, KII, FGD, document analysis. Problem number two, KII, FGD, document analysis. Ganun dapat. Triangulation asserts that in three instances, the statement of the problem is answered using these three data sets, each corroborating with each other. So, Data collection can be through interview, and there are many types of interview. There, it can also be participant observation. There are many qualitative data gathering techniques. Uh, data analysis, therefore, through is done through systematic procedures. Diba? Thematization pa rin yan. Ang bagsak. Diba? Kaya nga, systematic procedures, looking at narrow units. Diba? Significant statements. You look at statements, you you code it, you chunk it, you cluster it before you thematize it. Detailed descriptions are used to summarize two key elements. What individuals have experienced and how they have experienced it. At the end of the day, the shared experience is the culmination of the phenomenological study the essence of things so van manen will explain it this way research it's a type of research that focuses on lived experience so it says phenomenology is not a set of foxed procedures However, hermeneutic phenomenological research is a combination of these six activities. Let's just look at this very quickly. Uh, I'm less than 10 slides away. Uh, one, turning to a phenomeno phenomenon which seriously interests us and commits us to the world. Two, investigating experience as we live it, rather as we conceptualize it. So, Ang focus ay yung pamumuhay. Paano natin, nabu paano natin nararanasan itong mga to? Three, reflecting on the essential themes, mga the tema, which characterize the phenomenon. Four, describing the phenomenon through the art of writing. Fifth, manipulating a strong and oriented pedagogical relation. And sixth, balancing the research context by considering parts and whole and the play between parts and whole. Normally, whole and parts, di ba? Ganun yun. Pag may concept ka, hatiin mo siya into dimensions. Yung dimensions, hatiin mo siya into indicators. That's really quantitative research technique. Concepts, dimensions, indicators. Kung baga, uh, ang simula, may buong cake, hindi mo pa pwedeng kainin yung buong cake, kakatiin mo pa siya into slices. Yung hiwa ng cake, hindi mo pa pwedeng kainin kasi malaki pa, kaya is, magkukuha ka pa ng isang malit na slice, yung malit na slice, is spoonful mo. Is spoonful mo. Ganun yung laro. Lagi. Thus, in phenomenological research, the researcher provides not only a description but an interpretation of the lived experience. Hindi ito whole and parts, where the whole, the parts is equivalent to the whole, pero laro yan ng parts and whole pa rin. Gaya ng quantitative research. Mustakas would also use it this way. He says, it's a research focused less on interpretation and more on description of experience. So, mas pagka like kinikwento uh yung alam niyo yun yung pinaka late yung my latest research on Quiapo which was published this year only i think january or february 
uh, in Springer, I spoke about the experience of the petty thieves in Capo. Yung mga magnanakaw, mga tirador. Pero yung konsepto ng tirador, di ba? Yung magnanakaw sa Capo, alam nila kung peke yung jewelry mo o hindi. By just looking at your jewelry, kaya nilang sabihin 10 carats yan, 18 carats, ganon. Alam nila yung peke. Hindi sila magnanakaw ng peke. Kalokohan yun. Di ba? Uh, kaya na-realize ko yung, yung mga magnanakaw ng kiapo, may pangingilatis. Di ba? May discernment sila. Oo, nagdi-discern sila. Kaya nilang makita kung totoo o hindi. I mean, discernment as a concept came from the alahero. Di ba? Mga jewelry yan eh. Yung kaya nilang sabihin kung tubog ba, pwet ba ng baso, ano ba yung jewelry mo, ganun. Kaya nilang sabihin by just looking. Uh, at yung karanasan nila kakaiba. Kasi pag nagnakaw sila at nahuli sila, yung nanakaw nila, kukunin pa sa kanila ng pulis. Hanggang ang matitira nilang sa kanila yung latak nung nanakaw nila. <laughs> I'm not judging all policemen that they're like that. Pero yun yung konsepto sa likod ng tirador. Kasi yung nakaw nila, tira na nga, mula doon sa pinagnakawan, necklace, earrings, halimbawa, masakit-sakit yun pag earrings kasi hablutin yun eh. Cellphone. Pero kahit yung manguhuli sa kanila, magte-take advantage pa doon sa nakuha nila. Ganon. Pero doon mo rin makikita kung bakit, di ba? Pag nakakita ka ng bahay sa looban, ang semento yung baba. Pero sa taas, parang yero-yero na lang. Pag sa inisip ko, ganun na ganun din sila. Di ba? Pag familiar ka sa looban, naka-shirt topless sila lagi. Naka-pantalon pero topless. Naka-shorts pero topless. Uh, nagiging kamukha ng tao yung lugar na nakasanayan. Galing, di ba? Anyway, balik tayo dito. So, it relies on Husserl's concept of epoche eh, or suspension of bias where you set aside your experience in order to see things new. No? The epoche eh, led to a transcendental approach in which everything is perceived freshly as if for the first time. So the researcher technically develops two descriptions here. Uh, one is textural, what participants experience. Second is structural, how they experience it, which means conditions, situations, and contexts. Here, and you'd see, It derives the overall essence of experience from the two descriptions of textural, what they, ex what they experience, and structural, how they are experienced. Kaya dapat pag-researcher ka, magaling ka rin mag-imagine, maging creative kung paano mo iintindihin yung isang bagay. Paano mo ipapakita yung isang bagay? At dyan yung makikita kung bakit no read, no write pa rin yung pinakamahalagang principle ng research. Siyempre, magpe-phenomenological research ka. Hindi ka pa naman nakabasa ng phenomenological research. Paano mo malalaman yung phenomenological research? There's no way you can do phenomenological research without having consumed, read, processed phenomenological research. Okay? Bawal hula-hula. Second, So, what are the procedures of phenomenological inquiry? One, determine if phenomenological approach is best. You need to ask several people. Do you have several people who share a common experience? Can you develop policies, practices, or develop deeper understanding of the features of the phenomenon? Naalala ko, uh, nung una kong nag-aral ng uh, Black Nazarene studies, wala, wala talagang nag-aaral sa Black Nazarene mga seven years ago, well, hindi, sorry. Mga nine years ago. 
more pa wala 2024 na pala ngayon 2013 ako nagsimula uh, 10 years ago but now you can see people doing the devotion to the black nazarene and dami na nagba black nazarene uh, may dissertation na sa sa I, I sat in a dissertation in the National University of Singapore before. Uh, in Louvain, I have a colleague who also worked on the Black Nazarene. Ganon. Uh, recognize and understand the philosophy behind phenomenology, including bracketing, objective reality, individual experience. What are the distinctions? Uh, Collect data through multiple in-depth interviews and or other forms of collection. Kasi nga kailangan ng corroboration, triangulation. And then begin with the broad what and how. No, Please take note. What first before how. The how is the difficult question. No, No one in the right mind asks that question how in problem number one. Not only is that insane, it's just unthinkable. Kabaliwan lang talaga yan. Kabaliwan. Then you proceed with broader open-ended questions to gather textural and structural data. Again, for if you're not uh, aware, textural data here, you see it here, what participants experience as and structural is how they experience it and how they're considers conditions, situations, and even contexts. So the phenomenological data collection, as I said, has to be at least a combination of all these three uh, interview, KII, FGD, participant observation, Dialogical data, action research focus, meaning analysis of personal texts, interpretative phenomenology, which basically means the interpretation of the phenomena being observed. But remember, this is not going to be a mere, uh, yung iba kala nila, phenomenological research is purely uh, sharing, sharing. Hindi po, ha? Hindi, it's not purely sharing, sharing. Uh and then horizontalization. This is significant sentences or quotes that provide an understanding of how participants experience the phenomenon are being taken away. Uhugutin mo. No? Yan yung thematization process. Horizontalization tawag. So stems from the idea that the researcher should be receptive to and place equal value on every statement. Being universally receptive allows the researcher initially to grant equal value to each statement uttered and thus promotes a rhythmic flow between the researcher and the study, an interaction that motivates full disclosure of the experience. The metaphor of a Horizon is utilized when discussing horizontalization. Horizon. Uh, Siyempre, taga San Fernando kayo, sanay kayo mag-beach. Paminsan yung makikita mo doon sa yung, yung uh, itawag si Padre Roque, well, nasa tip ng tangko, it's 5 in the morning. Uh, abot tanaw. Yeah. Abot Tanaw is the horizon. Ano yung abot tanaw mo? At ano yung ibig sabihin ng abot tanaw? Diba? Yung pag-aabot ng tanaw. Diba? So take note, uh, promote this. Uh, the metaphor of a horizon is utilized when discussing horizontalization. A horizon can be thought of as a perspective or a way of seeing and experiencing the world. No? And then you can analyze the data. No? Two key questions are foundations for building and organizing data. What and how? This would highlight significant statements, develop clusters of meaning into themes, use themes to develop descriptions. Again, this, these are either textural description 
which includes what the participant experienced or imaginative, no? which includes variation, uh, structural description, how the context or setting influenced the experience of the phenomenon being experienced. And then compose it, uh, this written based on data, uh, essence, or what we call in philosophy the essential va invariant structure, yung non-conclusive structure. No? O, tapusin ko na ito, promise. Uh, the researcher is more interested in gaining a greater understanding of Z than merely of A, B, C, or D. Diba? Yung A, B, C, or D, yan yung galing sa, pwedeng galing yan sa statements lang ng respondents mo. Uh, but your goal is to see the essence. The, 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 kaya nga, remember, ang phenomenology, totoo, dapat, para sa lahat. Diba? The goal of philosophy is still the hen panta. The one in all. Even if it comes from the perspective of the many. Diba? Kasi kung ang babanggitin mo lang yung totoo para sa'yo, para sa'yo lang. Uh, subjective lang yun. Hindi tayo magkakaintindihan. Naintindihan kita kasi yung karanasan mo nangungusap rin sa karanasan ko. Okay? Uh, bakit may saysay si Platon hanggang ngayon? Kasi yung, sinasabi, yung sinabi niya noon nangungusap pa rin sa karanasan ko ngayon. Ganon. So, most of the literature is conducted at the end of data collection to corroborate data. Actually, it's, it's not true that it's conducted only after. It's conducted before, during, and after. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, kung ikaw lang nakakakita ng fenomena, wala kang related na literature man lang. No? And remember, Related doesn't mean exactly alike. No, that's not what it means. Related means related literature. Two different things. Huh? Mm. It is conducted by gathering interview data or qualitative data and phenomenal ties to both quality and quantity research. Uh, the strengths of it well, it helps to give a better understanding of the real-life situation and experience. Uh, it's good at surfacing deep issues, making voices heard, helps individuals to connect to the phenomenon and possibly the group, has the ability to query and probe in-depth issues of a phenomenon. Findings are allowed to emerge rather than being imposed by investigator. What are the challenges of it? A uh, strong understanding of philosophical approaches are required. Yes. You need to have at least and to have understood at least how it works. Participants need to be carefully selected to ensure they share the same the experience phenomenon. Third bracketing may be difficult for the researcher because of bias. Sample size, it can be hard to get over to people that a single figure sample or sample size is valid. Siyempre, alam na natin yan. In quant quantitative research, a sample size is computed using Yamani's formula. No? Uh, but in qualitative research, there's no sample size. I always tell my students, it's not sample size that matters in qualitative research, but saturation. Have we saturated the phenomena? Yun ang pinakamalaga. Kung nag-interview ka na ng dalawa, tas, tatlo, sorry, tatlong tao, tapos parehas na sila ng sinasabi, saturated na. Nakasagot mo na lahat ng tanong. Uh, nasagot mo na yung mga tanong. You don't need to do five if you can only do three if it's already saturated. Diba? Some may see little value in descriptive conclusions of research because, remember, because precisely also of the uh, non-probability sampling that is involved in qualitative research, 
it's not generalizable to the entire population. Uh, Mustakas will explain, the challenge facing the human science researcher is to describe things in themselves, to permit what is before one to enter consciousness and be understood in its meanings and essences in the light of intuition and self-reflection. The process involves a blending of what is really present with what is imagined as present from the vantage point of possible meanings, thus a unit of the real and the idea. Interesting. Uh... Yan naman talaga yung laro, di ba? Ano ba yung pagmumuni-muni ko lang? Ano yung hindi? According to Van Manen, there are many ways to structure phenomenological research. You can do this thematically, analytically, exemplificatively, exergetically, existentially, or even by inventing any approach. These are the resources that I've used in this presentation. I forgot to put the Merleau-Ponty texts, but it's all there anyway. At the end of the day, phenomenology is about experience. It's about describing the experience that is shared by all and that is supported by literature. I always tell my students, don't hide behind the literature. Be clear about what you want to say and let literature support you. Thank you very much for bearing with this le pre-recorded lecture. And I'm sorry again that I'm not able to join everyone, but thank you very much for this opportunity to lecture to you. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat.